It's all of our distractions in life are all of the impulses and instincts, the pleasures and pains of a polarized perspective because we're not doing what's really meaningful to us. I'm gonna first define accountability. When people think of accountability, if you look on the dictionary, it'll typically say, when you give somebody some action and responsibility to do it, they'll be accountable to get it done. And that's true. There's no doubt about it. But the question is, is why is it that some people seem to get things done and other people procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate? Why are they not being accountable? And this leads me to a topic that I address most every week, and that is human values. Whenever you're doing something that is really, really important to you, that's truly high on your priorities and your values, you're spontaneously inspired from within and disciplined from within to get it done. And therefore, if somebody asks you to do something, you're likely to get it done. You'll be accountable because it's something very important to you. But if somebody was to ask you to do something that really wasn't important to you, you felt maybe an obligation to do it, you think you ought to do it, supposed to do it, should do, got to do, have to do, must do, instead of love to do, you're probably going to procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate. You're not likely to continue to do it. And you'll give up if it becomes challenging. And therefore, you're not accountable. People are only accountable to what's really, really important to them in life. And the thing is, is finding out what that is is crucial if you want to become an accountable individual. Now, let's relate that to the brain, because that's what the topic is today. Now, everybody has a set of priorities, a set of values that are unique to them. Whenever they're doing something that's very highest on their value, they're accountable to get it done. But in addition to that, whenever they're doing something that's really high in their values, the blood glucose and oxygen goes into the forebrain. And the forebrain is called the prefrontal cortex, the media prefrontal cortex, the telencephalon. It's got different titles, but it's the most advanced part of the brain. This part of the brain is involved in inspired vision, strategic planning, executing those plans, and self-governance. So you're automatically more accountable when you're setting goals and objectives that are really aligned with what you value most in life. And this so often is overruled by you trying to fit into what the collective associations around you are trying to impose. If you have people yourself to and exaggerate to you, and then expect yourself to be somebody you're not and expect yourself to get things done that aren't really important to you. And then you'll end up being quote, unaccountable. Now, what's interesting is when people think of accountability, they very commonly think of people working in an organization or a company and they need to be accountable to get the job done. Or maybe in government, they need to be accountable to do what they're saying and having walking their talk, not limping their life. But this is, again, goes back to the value structure. If a manager is managing and leading people and, and hiring people for a job. If they get somebody whose their highest value is not matching in any degree what's expected of them as far as a job responsibility, they're less likely to be accountable to get the job done. Anytime you hire somebody and you have a job description and you don't find out what is highly highest in the values of the individual you're hiring and find out if how those job duties are going to help them fulfill their highest value. If they can't see how those job duties are going to help them fulfill their highest values, they're going to be less likely to be accountable, more likely to procrastinate. They're going to end up being disengaged. They're going to be, in a sense, having to be motivated and micromanaged to get things done. And this is not what you want. You want people accountable so you can be free to go do what's more important in your life. So anytime you're hiring somebody, you want to make sure that the job description is perceived by the person you're hiring, the individual you're hiring, as aligned with what they value. And a manager who doesn't hire wisely and gets people who are not inspired by their job is going to end up having a bunch of people that are not accountable. And accountability is really the ability to take into account and have a balanced objective and doing what's really important to you. I have a high value on teaching. You can rely on me to be doing that. I have a very low value on cooking and driving. You can't count on me to be cooking or driving. I haven't cooked since I was 24 and I haven't driven a car in 32 years. So if you expected me to do something that was low in my values, you're gonna be let down. And anytime you hire somebody 
and you expect them to do something that's not highest on their values, they're going to let you down. And or you're going to have to keep motivating and reminding them and incentivizing them to do it. You have to give them rewards to do it or punishment if you don't. And that's not the way to run a business nor run your life for that matter. So accountability is an expression of living congruently and aligned with what you value most. And anytime you're not able to do that and you're having to put out fires doing low priority things, you can guarantee that you're not going to get around to doing the things that really are meaningful to you. So don't hire some somebody unless you've identified with their values go on my website do the value determination process on anybody you're about to hire and find out what they value then take a clear idea of what the job description is and make sure it's clear and concise of what you're expecting from them the actions the daily actions you're going to actually have them do then go and find out how specifically is these actions going to help them fulfill what they value most if they can't answer that fluently and congruently and see how what they're going to do is going to help them fulfill their highest values. They're not going to be accountable. You're going to have to micromanage them, push them uphill. You're going to have to have, remind them and motivate them, and you're going to be frustrated. And, but that's a manager. As Drucker said, that's the management who hired that individual. It's not the problem with the individual. There's nothing wrong with the individual. If you know what their values are, you know what you can expect. And if you got a person that's not matching the job, you hired them. So the wise thing to do is to find out what they value first. Please go on my website and take advantage of the value determination process on anybody you're about to hire and do it for yourself for that matter. And ask yourself, how is my job duties helping me fulfill my values? If I can't see how my job, daily job duties help me fulfill my values, I'm not going to want to go to work. I'm going to be drained. I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be distracted. I'm going to get, want to be, uh, go off and, you know, get distracted by things and eating and food and distraction and shopping and looking on the internet or whatever, because I'm not engaged. You're only engaged in what you value most. You're only reliable and disciplined and focused on the things that you value most. You're only really going to be really accountable on the things you value most. And by the way, when you're doing something that's highest on your values, you're more objective. Objectivity means balanced oriented. You're, you're see things more neutrally. And whenever you're doing that, you're more accountable because you've been brought into accountability, both the positives and the negatives equally. Many people, when they're not doing something that's inspiring to them and they're unfulfilled and they, they go in, they bring the blood glucose and oxygen down into their amygdala. The amygdala wants to avoid a predator, seek a prey, avoid challenge, seek ease, avoid pain, seek pleasure, and it wants immediate gratification. And that's the thing that distracts us. All of our distractions in life are all of the impulses and instincts the pleasures and pains of a polarized perspective because we're not doing what's really meaningful to us. And the second we're doing something meaningful and doing something that's important in our values, the executive center comes online. We're become more objective. We're more neutral. We're more resilient, more adaptable. We're more accountable and we get things done and we walk our talk, not limp our life. We wake up our leader instead of becoming a follower. We trust our own decisions and actions and not have to rely on offloading our decisions to others, which is the followers mentality. And we're now an unborrowed visionary instead of a borrowed visionary. Living in the shadows of others instead of living as on the shoulders of giants is the difference. If you wanna make a bigger difference, you wanna be authentic, you wanna be inspired by your life, you wanna live by highest and prior, what's priority and de learn to delegate lower priority things. That allows you to get the forebrain, the executive center to come online and not your amygdala. Your amygdala is your survival center. Your executive center is your thrival center. If you want to thrive, if you want to be master of your destiny and not victim of history, you want to prioritize your daily life. And as long as you're prioritizing it, you're going places. I've seen people who've gone through, taken a list of what they're doing for the agenda for the day, prioritize it for the day, stuck to it one after another and kept a priority in the day, knocked it out of the ballpark, said no to things that were lower in priority, said no to all the opportunists, said no to all the distractions, the salespeople, and all the things that distracted them, and stayed focused on what was most meaningful and important to them. And they were accountable, and they got amazing things done. At the end of the day, they were resilient, adaptable. They came home. They loved their family. They were not reactive. They were not dumping and downloading all their emotions onto people. They're present. And that's what's possible when people take command of their priorities. But if they did not do that, they're afraid to say no, that they get inundated by all these unexpected things. They're putting fires out, they're doing lower priority things. They're basically disengaged, they're back in their amygdala. They're now wanting to avoid pain and seek pleasure. Seems, see, everything seems to be distressful instead of you stressful. 
Now what you're doing is you're running your body down. You're causing what is called entropy disorder. You're highly emotional. You're in what is called systems one thinking where your emotions and feeling before you're thinking. You're reacting. You're saying things you then regret. You're living in fantasies and avoiding nightmares. You're basically basically disempowered in your life. And what happens in, at the end of the day, you're just a bear. And now you download it on your family. You download on your, your frustrations. Your self-worth is depleted. You're drained. You want to go out and drink and party and escape at night instead of being inspired and being focused on a vision and being present with your loved ones. So this is the difference between living by priority or living by lower priority. Higher priority actions build self-worth and build accomplishment and being the master out of you. And lower priorities automatically make the mess and become part of the masses. And I have mass awareness. You become part of the herd instead of going out and being heard. So it's so important to actually take the time to go and go online and do the value determination process and find out what's really important to you. And don't try to be somebody you're not. Remember, your identity revolves around what you value most. Your purpose revolves around what you value most. Your inspirations revolve around what you value most. And you learn most around what you value most. And if you stick to that, you excel. You're literally, your brain is setting up, is set up to organize your life in a way where you can fulfill your authenticity. Your identity revolves around your highest values. The most authentic life is living by priority. I, I basically delegated everything off my plate in life except teach, research, and write. Those are the three things that are absolute highest of my values. The top one is teaching. So I spend my day doing that in whatever capacity I'm doing that. And that way I've delegated everything else, got off, got those things off my plate and allowed me to focus on them. And people say, well, yeah, but that's fine because, well, you have the money to do that. No, backwards. I got the money because I did that. When I was 27 years old, I got a book called the, by Alec McKinsey called The Time Trap. And prior to that, I was just scraping by and getting by month after month. The moment I started to prioritize my life, finding out what was really important, what really produced the most, what really had the most meaning, and started to delegate to lower priority things and hiring people. I gave job opportunities. I gave more. I got to pay more taxes to the government. Got to end up having more, more people employed, more people able to go to school. I mean, families were born. I got to be free to go and do what I really love to do in my practice. I mean, it was amazing. And I made a tenfold increase in income from a literally a 970 square foot little office, one moment, reading a book, applying the delegation process, sticking to priority. 18 months later, I had five doctors, 12 staff members, and a tenfold increase in net income. It pays to delegate properly. But if you hire somebody that's not inspired, that's not high in their values, and you got to micromanage them, that's not delegation. That's you releasing it to somebody who's incompetent who doesn't really want to do it. And that's not fair to them. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to the customer. It's not fair to anybody. So it's very important to be accountable. And that accountability is going to be a reflection of how congruent you are with what you value most. And the accountability in your business or the accountability in your family or accountability in your social structure is going to be to the degree of their congruency. Don't ever expect somebody to do anything other than what they value most, or you're going to be betrayed. And betrayal is not what somebody does to you. Betrayal is what you do to you when you project an expectation on other people to live outside their values and in your values. So many people in relationships are both in their amygdala, they're unfulfilled, they're down in their amygdala. The amygdala is involved in the addiction to pride and fantasies and immediate gratification, addictive behaviors. And so both people are sitting there in their amygdala. They're both living in a pride mode. They're both projecting their values onto each other. They're both expecting each other to live in the other person's values and read their minds. They both are in clash. They both are into fight, flight modes. And they're not learning how to love and appreciate the people for who they are. The only thing you can expect anybody to do is live and try to fulfill what they value most. I learned a long time ago, if you expect anybody to do anything other than try to fulfill what they most value in their life, you're going to end up being defeated. It's not going to happen. My, if you expect me to do anything other than teach, research, and write, you're probably going to be let down. And I'm going to delegate the rest away. Now, I'll get it done through other people, but I'm not going to do it myself. And if you're going through life, if you want an inspired life, it's not going to happen by, by doing lower priority things. Every time you do low priority things, you devalue yourself, you bring your blood glucose and oxygen down to your amygdala, you go into immediate gratification, 
And the amygdala is involved, as I said, in impulses and instincts of pleasures and pains, uh, seeking and avoiding them. All the distractions, every distraction you've ever had in your life is an amygdala response. And every focused attention that's a means and a dream that's meaningful to your life is in that executive function. So if you really want to make a difference and become the leader that you have inside you, you have an inborn leader waiting to come out, it's start living by priority. If you want to be accountable, that's what it means. Accountable means to be able to bring both sides of the equation into accounting, a balance sheet, if you will, in, in finances. But what happens is you have, when you're infatuated with something, you're conscious of the upsides, you're unconscious of the downsides. When you're resentful to something, you're conscious of the downsides, unconscious of the upsides. Whenever you're doing that, you're going to be seeking and avoiding it. And you're going to be distracted and you're in your amygdala and that's running you. You're run from the external world, not run from within. You run from the outside. You're extrinsically driven. But the moment you actually prioritize your life and get in, in focus, get the blood glucose and oxygen in the forebrain, you start having more balanced objectives. You start mitigating risk with strategic planning. You start seeing the vision of what you can do. And you're more poised and present and more objective, not subjectively biased. And in that state, that's when you're least reactive, more proactive, get things done, build incremental momentum towards greater achievement, and end up saying thank you. In fact, the executive center of the brain is called the gratitude center also. So you're grateful for your life the moment you live by priority. And people think that they're looking for some sort of magic bullet instead of looking at what really works. And what works is sticking to what's priority in life. And if you don't take the time to make a priority list about what's really important, I learned from Mary Kay from AK Cosmetics almost 40 years ago that uh, I asked her what advice could she give a young man who's aspiring to travel the world and teach. And she said, write down the six or seven highest priority actions every day that can help you fulfill your dreams in life. And I wrote these things down and then I went through them. I kept them on index cards and I went through hundreds of those over days, over a number of years. And I basically extracted out the highest priority of the highest priority, of the highest priority, of the things that kept showing up highest priority. And for me, it was teach, research, and write and travel. And so I just said, all right, I'm not going to do anything lower. How do you expect to have an inspired life if you're doing lower priority things? How do you expect to have a meaningful life if you're doing things that are meaningless? How do you expect to be a leader when you're sitting being a follower? How do you expect to be an executive function where you have governance over your life and not emotionally reactive like an animal if you're not living by priority? So all I know is that I followed the, her, her advice. I narrowed it down to those things. I delegated the rest away between the time trap by Alec McKinsey and what Mary Kay Ash told me that day. I merged those two principles. They lay, led to the same outcome, found out what was really most important to me, gave up on the rest of it, said, I'm not doing the lower priority stuff. I don't want to live my life in desperation. I want a life of inspiration. And I'm not going to do that if I don't fill my day with inspiring actions that are meaningful to me. So I found myself more accountable. I'm very accountable for teaching, researching, and writing. You can rely on me to do that. Uh, I'm, I don't let people down in that area. But ask me to cook, ask me to drive, ask me to do pretty well anything else, clean the house or anything like that, those kind of things. I don't do that. I learned that every time I do something that's I could pay somebody 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $100, $200, anything less than what I'm capable of making in an hour, if I have a job that, pay, that pays less than that, for me, it's wise to delegate it. I did accounting when I first opened up my business many years ago. I stopped it at age 27 because I realized I could hire somebody for 20, 25 to $50 an hour to do the accounting for me and to do the bookkeeping for me and write all the checks and do all the payroll and do all that kind of stuff. Well, I could go make thousands an hour. So once I realized that I'm going to be every hour I'm doing that, I'm devaluing myself and stopping me from doing the thing that produces the most income. I'm working against myself. So once I did, I never turned back. I let it go. And I hired people to do it. And sometimes that would take me two or three people to get the right person on the bus, as Jim Collins said. I didn't care. Whatever it took to get that off my plate and on to what's priority. That allows me to be inspired. I can't wait to get up in the morning and go to work. And as Ward Buffett says, you get to tap dance to work. He basically doesn't sit down and do low priority stuff, Warren Buffett. He focuses on reading, looks at the financials, look at business uh, you know, financial statements and things, and decides what his next investment's going to be. He spends his day doing what is meaningful and inspiring that's fulfilling to him. And there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. I've trained thousands of people how to do that. I've been teaching a program called The Breakthrough Expense for 33 and a half years. 
showing people how to determine their values, how to structure their life, how to prioritize their life, how to delegate lower priority things, how to use the Demartini method on how to get out of the amygdala and back onto the executive function to dissolve the emotional baggage and to get focused on what's important, to liberate yourself from the, the quiet life of desperation, to live a life of inspiration, and to be accountable for what you say, to walk your talk, not limp your life. That's totally doable. I've been teaching people in that program for 33 and a half years. I've taught it 1,148 times now. And I'm absolutely certain it's trainable, translatable, trans transcribable. Any human being can do it. It's just a matter of taking the time to prioritize your life and to learn how to dissolve the baggage that occurs when you don't. And a lot of the baggage that we have in our life is a result of feedback mechanism to guide us back to authenticity. So if you're not living by highest priority, you're adding more emotional baggage. You're storing more in your subconscious mind. You're becoming more animalistic. But the second you prioritize your life and give yourself permission to shed that and use the Demartini method I teach in the Breakthrough Experience on how to break through that, to move you from the amygdala back in the executive center, amazing things happen in your life. You can take command of your life. There's absolutely no reason why you can't have an inspired life. And I, I, I lived in the streets when I was a kid. I know what it's like to be overwhelmed when I was at 20-something 20, 20 years old. But once I learned these tools and started applying these tools, it liberated, liberated my life and allowed me to do what I do today. And I've been blessed today because I've learned how, how easy it really is. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. It's, we make it rocket science. We make it complex because we're afraid of rejection from other people. We're afraid to say yeah, no to what they expect. There's all kinds of things. In the breakthrough experience, I, I give you all the excuses that why people come up with reasons why they can't do what's really important to them. And as long as you let those excuses run your life and not take command of your life, well, you're going to have a quiet life of desperation. Now, I just wanted to make sure I gave you something on accountability today. But I want to let you know that the breakthrough experience, the program I just mentioned, if you're willing to master your mind and master your executive center so you can master your life, I'm giving you, I will be teaching in this program seven proven personal development tools on how to do that. The Demartini method is a gold mine. Right now, we're in the middle of filming a, a movie and a documentary on it because of its empowerment. I want you to be able to take advantage of this, this tool. This method I've been working on for nearly 50 years. I've been doing anything that can maximize human awareness potential. I've been trying to synthesize and synchronize and put together into a, miss, a mission and model. The Demartini method is a very powerful tool to help you dissolve all the emotional baggage that's holding you back in life and to help you get in the executive center and stay there. Take advantage of this opportunity to do it. Let me show you what I've showed thousands of other people on how to break through these limitations. Let me show you how to be accountable in your life and show you how to live an inspired life, not a quiet life of desperation. Take advantage of this opportunity. Come and learn the Demartini method. It's a tool with a thousand uses. You're going to be using it the rest of your life. It's a gold mine. And let me show you how to define what your values are, structure your life accordingly so you can live an inspired life, not one of quiet desperation. So that's my message for the week. Until next week, thank you for joining me. Please just sign up now, take advantage of this opportunity. I, I know you will say thank you. I've asked people at the end of the break to experience for three, three, three decades, four years or whatever almost. I've asked how many of you learned something this weekend you could have gone your whole life and never you would never have learned if you hadn't been here. Every hand goes up week after week after week. So please take advantage of this great information. It's a distillation of nearly 50 years of research. And I know I can help you save you an enormous amount of times if you want to master your life. If you want to live as an executive, taking command of your life and not live as in the amygdala, having the world around you run you, come to the Breakthrough Experience.